Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a color e-reader that uses an e-ink display. This is called the Books Go, and this is their seven inch version. And this is from the same company that made the Books Palma, which was a phone sized e-ink e-reader that we looked at the other day. And what's neat about these is that first of all, it's in color, but secondly, it is running with Android. So you can load up the Google Play Store here and load in all sorts of apps on the device, at least ones that make sense for an e-ink display. And we're going to take a closer look at what this color e-ink reader is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this color e-reader is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $249. This actually costs less than the Books Palma device that we looked at the other day, which is black and white with a smaller screen. Uh, but this does not have a camera on board, which might make the difference in price. Now this has an e-ink display. So although it is color, the display only updates when something happens on screen. As a result, the touch screen here is not all that responsive as you're moving around. It's not going to rival what you have on your smartphone, but it's designed for reading and other more static displayed images that don't update the screen all that frequently. And of course, you've got access to the Google Play Store here. One thing that I noticed right out of the gate is that the display is a lot dimmer with the light off versus a black and white e-ink display. My understanding of how this technology works is that there is a layer on top of the screen that makes the color possible. And so it does make the screen a little less nice to look at and a little darker. So you do of course have, if you pull down the menu here, a backlight that you can turn on. And I would suggest keeping it on the higher setting to get the best results out of it. You can also adjust the color temperature. So right now it's kind of on its bluer hue and you can uh, change the color temperature here and make it warmer if you want less blue light at night. And that is very similar to the other books device that we looked at. The resolution of the display is running at 1680 by 1264. This is made by e-ink. It's called their Kaleido 3 touch display. You get 300 DPI with black and white images, but only 150 DPI when you're looking at images in color. And I did notice you'll see a little bit of the dot pitch of the display when looking at color images with it. The color, as you saw at the outset here, isn't bad actually. Not as good as a traditional LED backlit display, uh, but it is color and it is e-ink. And right now, uh, my ugly mug here on the screen is not consuming any battery life because it only updates things when I actually touch the screen and interact with it. Now, one thing I noticed with this color e-ink display is that you do get much more ghosting than you might get on a black and white one. So as you can see, as I scroll my image up and down here, there is a latent image that is visible until the screen updates. Typically, it waits for you to lift your finger off the screen before it pushes the update uh, back and forth there. You will get exceptional battery life out of this. I would measure it in days and not hours, but it all depends on exactly what you're going to be doing on the device. Reading, of course, will consume very little power, but if you are running Android apps that have to do some computational workloads in the background, that might consume a little bit more. And I'll show you some of the power management that they've put into place here that I thought was pretty clever in so far as how it manages apps, and we'll get into that in a little bit. It is very lightweight. 195 grams or just under seven ounces. There are some buttons here on the front. These can be used for adjusting the volume of its speaker. It does have a speaker on board. It doesn't sound great, but it's good enough for an audiobook or something or listening to a podcast. It also supports Bluetooth so you can connect headphones up later. And these buttons can be reprogrammed to be page buttons if you want. I like that there's a nice bezel here on the side so you can hold this with your thumb without uh, setting off the touch display. And of course, many apps allow you to just tap the screen to advance forward and back. There are no ports on here beyond a USB Type-C port here next to its speaker. This is what you use for charging. You also, somewhere on here, have a spot for a micro SD card. You can just pop out that little tray there and plug in additional storage if you have a lot of documents to store on the device. As you saw there, I accidentally hit the power button at the bottom. 
Uh, so that is how you turn it on and off. This will actually shut itself all the way down by default after a couple of minutes to better preserve the battery life as well. So they're really trying to get to a Kindle level of battery performance on this one. Now, unlike the Kindle, this is running Android. The OS it has on board is Android 12. It's got four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, plus the SD card. However, there's not much security on here. So by default, it doesn't ask you for any kind of password, even after you attach your Google account to it. So you can enable the password, but you do have to type it in with its very latent touch display to get in every time. I would have preferred some kind of fingerprint reader or other kind of biometrics to speed up the login process while still maintaining security. So that was one area that I was a bit concerned with. But the apps seem to work just fine on here. So we can jump into the Barnes & Noble Nook app here. And as we scroll through the page, it looks pretty nice. You can see the animation is a little flaky on it. You could probably disable that. Um, but from an e-reader perspective, I found the black and white text to be very nice on here, even if it's a little bit dim when the backlight is off. From a color perspective, if you've got graphic novels that you want to take a look at, uh, you can look at them in color on here. So if I load up the Kindle app, uh, once the display updates here, uh, you can see that I'm looking at a Star Trek comic right now, and this is what it looks like. The color isn't bad. Uh, you can zoom in on it, of course, and there are ways that you can zoom into each portion of the uh, comic as well because it works just like the Am Android app works. But as you'll see, compared to my phone here, as I pull up the same uh, image on it, it doesn't look nearly as good as an OLED display might. So as I scroll through the comic here, you can see this looks just so much better uh, than it does on an e-ink display. But you do get the benefit of the extended battery life. And of course, this display on my phone updates a lot faster than uh, what we're seeing here on the Kindle app. But still pretty cool to get workable color on an e-ink display. Now you do have the ability to adjust settings on an app-by-app -app basis. To do that, you just pull up the left-hand side of the screen here most of the time, and you will get the display settings. Now right now, I've got this one set to Vivid and Regal which I found to be the best for this particular app, but you can also adjust for speed where it updates the screen less frequently. That's good for scrolling. Uh, you also have a few other tweaks that you can make depending on the app that you have loaded, and it will remember the settings for each app, so you don't have to jump into this every time. Additionally, you have some other optimizations for the app itself. Uh, when I was talking about power management before, this one's pretty important because uh, by default, apps will not stay active in the background after you exit, and that is a battery saving technique, but you could set some apps to run in the background if you want. Uh, you also have the ability to configure the side buttons, again, on an app by app basis. You can even remove the startup animation of apps if supported uh, to prevent that, and you find all of these settings in the Others tab here. You also have some options for color documents, so you could put an outline around text, for example. I'm not sure it'll work so well with this because it's all a scanned image. Uh, you can also set a background color uh, if you don't like the way things look on the particular app that you're running. This DPI setting actually just adjusts the size of the page on screen. So this is kind of a zoom function, and I think it's around 300 by default there. And you also have some options for eliminating font aliasing and uh, bolding certain things. There's a couple of different ways that you can adjust how text looks. I found the color display does require a little more tweaking even with text than your standard black and white display does on e-ink. Now you can play some games on here, but you're not going to be playing any action titles. I would strictly leave this to word and puzzle games. So for example, I can load up the New York Times games here. And if we select Wordle, this is a great example of a game that I think works very well with this color display. So I can type in my uh, guess here. As you can see, the keyboard is a little slow to respond. And once I type all that in here and I uh, hit enter, we can get a color feedback here to uh, what we just typed in. So it's possible, I think, to do things like this, some crossword puzzles. The spelling bee game works pretty well on here too. Uh, but anything that's going to require animation is probably a non-starter. I was surprised that their black and white e-ink display worked pretty well with YouTube, but this color display is kind of a non-starter when it comes to video. So you can see right now I've got the display on its fastest setting. 
The color doesn't look all that great. Um, we've got a lot of ghosting going on here and it's having a hard time keeping up with the frame rate as well. But if you had to watch a video in a pinch, I suppose you could do it here, but just not ideal. And again, we are on the fastest display setting. But it does have some pretty nice PDF capabilities along with a very simple way to get PDFs loaded onto it. They do have a cloud service that you can work with, but you can actually just load things onto the device directly via your Wi-Fi network. They have an app here called Books Drop, and what it will give you is the local IP address of your tablet on your network. And when you hit that address, uh, you will get this really intuitive interface called Books Drop. This is actually running on the tablet itself. On my computer here, I've got an old magazine, my old Apple II magazine here, and it's about, I don't know, 70 megabytes in size. I can just drag it over here, and what this will do is copy it over to the books tablet. This uh, web server is running by default, so <laughs> when you get this thing out of the box and put it on your network, it's available to anyone who finds the address and there's no password for it, so I still have some security concerns here. Um, but it was very easy to load that document onto it, and if I go over to my uh, storage here and we go into documents, you will see that that magazine now is right on the device and I can tap on this thing and it's going to load up that 60 plus megabyte file and I can start reading it. So I can just tap the screen here to uh, go to different pages. They have a little floating toolbar that I think I can get rid of here. There we go. Uh, and I can just scroll through everything. I can also pinch to zoom and zoom in on a particular section. Again, the display is rather slow, so you've got to deal with that. Um, but I did find even large PDFs like this one display pretty nicely on here and uh, scroll through quite quickly, even at higher resolutions. So if you are looking for a good PDF reader, uh, this is certainly going to do it for you, and it's in color. Again, it won't look as good as your OLED tablet will, um, but it is color on an e-ink display, which I think is pretty neat. So all in, I found this to be a pretty neat device. I am concerned about some of the security issues that I'm seeing here. One, of course, is not having a password by default to get into the device, and also that web server that's running without a password where people could load whatever they want uh, into your tablet if they were on the same network. Uh, those issues aside, and they are big ones, uh, this is a pretty cool little reader, and the color e-ink display is pretty impressive. The quality, of course, is not as good as what you would get on an LED or OLED tablet, but it's passable. It's very close to what you might experience with a newspaper print as far as the color is concerned, but it works, and I thought that was pretty cool. If you don't need the color, I think you'll be more happy with a black and white e-ink display. They're not as dim as this one is, and it is a little sharper. Uh, but if you are looking for color for PDFs or whatever, this will certainly get you there. I did not see any pen option for this one. They do have more expensive devices with larger screens that do support pens. Uh, but for a small compact reader, this is pretty nice, especially given that you can run any reader app on it. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.